Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about the 2020 Senate races, and before that, I just wanted to thank you all for 300 subscribers. I really appreciate all of the support you guys have been, have been giving me lately, and really motivates me and makes me want to make more videos. And if you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate that. And so here on your screen, we have the 2020 Senate map. Basically, all of these states that are in blue or red are states that are up for re-election in the 2020 Senate races. Basically, as you can see, there are many more Republican seats up for election than there are Democratic seats, but currently the Republican Party does have the slight edge over the Democrats with 53 seats to the Democrats' 47 seats in the Senate. So really, the Democrats have to, basically all they have to do is retain all of their seats and win three more seats if they want a 50-50, and if Joe Biden wins the election, they will um, practically have the majority in the Senate. Um, so today I just wanted to take a look at the Cook Political Reports forecast on the 2020 Senate races. As you can see here, um, they're, they're very unbiased political forecasts, which is why I like uh, using them uh, when, I'm talk about, when I'm talking about my Senate races. Basically, um, out of the 12 Democratic held seats, they give 10 seats as solid for the Democratic Party. One seat, um, Gary Peters' seat in the state of Michigan, they classify as a lean state for the Democrats, while um, uh, Doug Jones' seat in the state of Alabama, they um, categorize as a lean Republican seat. Um, he won the state. He won. He won his seat in a special election in 2018, and I think that this is probably the most uh, vulnerable Democratic seat, uh, Doug Jones' seat in the state of Alabama. However, for the Republican Party, it is not looking um, as well as it is for the Democrats. You know, they have um, they have 10 solid seats out of their 23, um, four likely Republican seats. You know, uh, Dan Sullivan, Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, and Steve Cornyn seats. I think these seats um, are very solid for the Demo uh, for the Republican Party. I really do not see any Democrat flipping these seats. However, I do think that they will be able to pose some good challenges in these states. Uh, the lean Republican seats in the states of Georgia and Kansas, I really don't see um, a, a Democrat flipping these seats. I think that the Republicans will be able to hold on to these seats even on the Senate level. And then looking at their lean Democratic seats, the state of Arizona with Martha McSally, Mark, uh, Mark Kelly lean, leads by seven points in this state. I think that he will almost definitely be able to flip the state at this point. McSally is not a popular senator from Arizona. Uh, she only became a senator because John McCain um, passed away. She um, became a senator in 2019, and um, she is not highly approved of in the state of Arizona. However, I think what is the um, looking, you know, the thing that makes this all look you know pretty bad for the republican party is how there are six toss-up seats these are all seats held by republicans right now and six of them are toss-ups so um we're gonna look at this a little closer on the senate map here this is basically the exact same map that i have um basically plotted out based on the cook political report um, as you can see, the states of Alabama, Arizona, these are the two flip seats that they give for the Democratic and Republican parties, and then the six toss-up seats. So I agree with these um, flip seats. I think Arizona, I mean Alabama, will become a Republican-held Senate um, once again. I think that in the state of Alabama, um, you know, this is a very red state in the Deep South. Uh, you know, I really do not see Doug Jones uh, holding onto his seat as a Democrat in Alabama. However, in Arizona, becoming more and more liberal, I, I do see Joe Biden definitely carrying the seat. And, you know, Mark Kelly polls better against Martha McSally than Biden does against Trump. You know, Biden pulls ahead of Donald Trump by around 3 to 4 percent, but Marth, uh, Mark Kelly has a seven point edge over McSally in the um, Arizona Senate races. And then looking at these six toss-up states, it's really these states that we're going to talk about in this video. Um, so currently there are 47 uh, to 47 states. I think that um, the Republicans and Democrats will almost definitely win. I really, you know, I don't see Alabama be being too close or Arizona. I think these are all going to flip. And, you know, South Carolina and Kentucky, I really do not see Graham or Mitch McConnell losing their seats. However, in these six states, I can definitely see um, some Democrats flipping these seats. So first, looking at the state of Montana, uh, Steve Daines has ha held the seat since 2015. He won it in 2014, and his Democratic challenger is Steve Bullock, the former governor of Montana. And I think that Bullock, you know, he's a very popular figure in this state. And I think that, um, you know, if he were to carry this state, you know, it would be very good for the Democrats. I definitely think that he does have the potential, uh, does have the potential to um, flip the state of Montana for the Democratic Party. 
Uh, next, looking at the state of Colorado. Um, Colorado, uh, held by Cory Gardner, a Republican at the moment, uh, he won he also took office in 2015, and his challenger is also a very popular Democratic um, governor, former governor from the state, John Hickenlooper. He did run for president, like like Steve Bullock. Both of their campaigns really did not get much attention. You know, they're not very popular names or no names nationwide. However, in their home states, they're both very popular political figures. So Colorado, I think that John Hickenlooper will be able to flip. Um, you know, if he would have flipped, that would put the Democrats at 49, and they would just have to win one more out of the three seats to have um, the Senate for the Democratic Party if Joe Biden wins the election. Now, um, basically, five of these uh, toss-up seats that are both held by Republicans that won their seats in 2014, which was a Republican wave year, except for the state of Maine, which I think is probably the most interesting race um, in the Senate elections. And then in the state of Iowa, Joni Ernst won it in 2014, took office in 2015. Teresa Greenfield is polling ahead of her in this state. So just based on polling data an alone, I'm just going to use polling data for my categorizing categorizations at first. Montana, Colorado, Iowa goes to the Democratic Party. They now have 50 seats, and if Joe Biden wins the election, which he most likely likely will, the Democrats have control of the Senate, which means Biden will be able to, you know, pass things, um, you know, in Congress, unlike Barack Obama in his final two years. And then looking at the state of Georgia, David Perdue um, is being, you know, outpolled by John Ossoff in the state of Georgia. Georgia will also go to the Democratic Party if it was just based solely on polling data. And looking at North Carolina, Tom Tillis um, also took office in 2015, you know, polling seven points behind uh, Cal Cunningham. And so he would also lose his seat if polling data were to um, come true in the 2020 Senate races. So five of these seats would be flipped for the Democrats already. They would win every single toss-up seat if, um, you know, based solely on the polling data that just come out. And then next, looking at the state of Maine, Susan Collins, a senator from the state of Maine since 1997. She won her first race in 1996. And, you know, she had not had a single... Um, she has not had a competitive race ever um, besides her first race, which wasn't even that close. And so, you know, she, in 2014, she won her Senate seat. Um, she won re-election by 37% in 2014. While now she is pulling four points behind Sarah Gideon, um, her Democratic challenger. This is because, you know, at one point she was the most popular senator in the country. She was more popular than Bernie Sanders. However, now, um, because of some votes, you know, she voted to acquit President Trump in the impeachment hearings. Uh, she voted in favor of Brett Kavanaugh. Um, his Supreme Court nomination. So it was just these things that really um, made her popularity go down with um, with the people of the state of Maine. Uh, Maine tends to elect um, bipartisan senators, and you know what she did. You know, I, uh, many people saw as um, leaning towards the Republicans, which they didn't necessarily like, which is why Sarah Gideon is now out polling Susan Collins, who has held the seat for 24 years. Um, I do think that as of now, Sarah Gideon will be able to flip the Senate seat in the state of Maine, controlling 53 seats. So basically what this means is that if Donald Trump were to win the election and, you know, the Democrats retain um, their majority in the House of Representatives and flip the Senate, which, you know, seems very likely right now, Trump really would not be able to get too much done in office in these next four years. And the Democrats would have full control of Congress for the next two years. But um, I do think that some of these states will be very close. I think that, um, you know, realistically, I think Georgia and North Carolina will not flip to the Democratic Party. I think that um, the um, the Republican incumbents will be able to um, keep their hold on this state. I think that a 51-49 Senate is most likely. If not, I think Iowa. Um, Iowa does have a chance of going red as well. I think Iowa re is really one of the closest um, Senate seats at the moment. But I think that, you know, a 50-50 is all the Democratic Party needs. If, you know, Joe Biden is now expecting to win the election by over 200 electoral votes. So if Joe Biden wins, um, the, his vice president would, of course, break ties as the president of the Senate. And, you know, with 50 electoral, I mean, with 50 senators, um, you know, all they would need is 50 senators to vote on a bill. And then for the Democratic um, vice president to break that tie, so the Democrats would really be able to get anything they wanted passed through the House and the Senate. The House, of course, which they are expected to keep their hold on. So this is all looking pretty good for the Democratic Party. I will doing I will be doing a more in-depth um, Senate prediction 
at the beginning of August, around August 2nd or 3rd, so make sure you keep out for that. As well as that, um, on the 1st of August, I will, of course, be doing my bi-weekly uh, um, uh, 2020 election predictions between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, so make sure you stay, um, stay tuned for that. And so if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, as well as subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate that, and I will see you in the next video.